Good morning, rise and shine. It's Sunday morning in beautiful downtown Silverton, Oregon, and I'm Bill Wilson, and you are listening to the Old Time Gospel Hour on Radio ILC, broadcasting from the worship service at Emmanuel Lutheran Church. heard Nate Kapener playing our theme song, In Christ Alone, on his viola. Thank you, Nate. Appreciate that for your wonderful rendition. 
This morning, our program is sponsored by Camel Cigarettes. So to all of our smokers out there, <coughs> smoke Camel. The cigarette recommended by more doctors than any other brand. <laughs> and now would the congregation please rise as you are able. O oh Lord our God, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Today we celebrate the name of God, Holy Blessed Trinity. There is no other day quite like this one in the church's year. There is no other God like ours. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And now Darlene Bass and Lisa Anderson will lead us in that old favorite hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy. And for those of you listening at home, you may be seated too. We don't want your neighbors worrying. <laughs> and a reminder from the person sitting next to you, aren't you glad you used dial soap? <laughs> don't you wish everyone did? Ah yes, what a wonderful morning. You know Psalm 148 says, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens, praise him in the heights above. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his heavenly hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, you highest heavens and you waters above the skies. Here to share more from the Psalms about giving God praise are Mark and Nancy Dickman singing, I want to praise your name.
thank you, Mark and Nancy, for reminding us that it is always good to give praise unto the Lord. And now it's time to hear from our listeners. Hey, Natalie. Hi, Bill. Natalie, do we have any dedications and memories from our listeners this morning? We sure do. I, in fact, will read you some of them now. Please read them. All right, so so today we have a special guest, and his name is Pastor Don Brekos, and he was the pastor here about 40 years ago, uh, from 1975 to 1988. And one of our listeners wants to say welcome back and uh, to Pastor Don and Pat Brekos worshiping with us today. And another listener wants to wish safe travels and blessings to Pastor Leah and the other women on the women's retreat this weekend. And another listener has a memory that they want to share. Um, They talk about growing up on a farm and raising animals and having their own pork and chicken and milk. And they enjoyed going to Luther League meetings and um, to Coast and Couples Club trips. So that's their memory they wanted to share. And uh, another dedication I have here is uh, mom and dad would like to say happy wedding this summer to John and Bree. Oh, happy wedding to you guys. Um, Another listener has a memory of their grandma, Hilda, playing the piano for church, and she played her songs with lots of joy. And then our last memory we have here is from one of our listeners, and that is of First Lutheran Church in Plains, Montana. And that's where they had uh, potlucks in the sanctuary, and they remember seeing kids climb the trees after church, and the church was well known in that town for being the church with the big red cross. Wow, thank you, Natalie. Ah, church potlucks and all that (laughs) jello. Please come back and share a little bit more later in the service. And uh, right now, let's find out what's happening at our favorite sister church in Minnesota. Joe. Hello, Bill. Joe, I know you have relatives up in Minnesota. So, do you have any news from our friends at Left Lutheran Church? Yeah. Yeah, I talked to Ole this morning. Yeah, he said, uh, yeah, before he went to church, he talked to Lena, and he said, Lena, we're going to check the blinkers on the car. Can you go in the front of the car and see if my blinkers are working? So she did, and she went out to the front of the car and said, yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah, no. <laughs> Oh my, there but for the grace of God. (laughs) Speaking of grace, let's listen to a women's group called IS, the Emmanuel Sisters, sing Amazing Grace.
That was beautiful. And now Pastor Jim Bornson will lead us in communion with the help of Halfway Home. Well, you folks know, and I think the folks at home know too, what happened that last night Jesus was with his disciples. They were celebrating the Passover. You know, the Passover, that's that Jewish thing that the Jew folks do. But it remembers the salvation of Israel from slavery in Egypt. Now, Moses was told, God told Moses, you go to Pharaoh and you tell Pharaoh to let my people go. Well, Moses was scared. He didn't want to go face that Pharaoh. But God says, I will be with you. So the Jewish folks remember this wonderful story of Passover and the Exodus and how God, through Moses, led the people out of slavery right through the middle of that Red Sea that parted. You remember that story? How the sea parted, the Israelites went through the sea, and then the sea came back and covered up all them Egyptian chariots. Well, I'll tell you, this Passover meal was pretty important. So Jesus and his friends, they got together to remember the Passover. They had the unleavened bread. This here is the unleavened bread. And they decided that this time it would be a little different. Jesus says, this bread is not just the unleavened bread of Passover, but I want you to remember this bread as my body. My body, Jesus said, because he knew he was going to die on the cross. That's nothing to laugh at, folks. You Norwegians especially take this real serious. I know you do. Jesus said, this is my body, and it's going to be given for you, as it is right here and now, given for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Then when the meal was just about done, Jesus took this, this cup, the cup of blessing it was called, that's what the Jewish folks call it, the cup of blessing, blessed God, not just the fruit of the vine, the fruit of the vine, Jesus said, is also my blood. The disciples looked at him. What? My blood, because I'm going to die on the cross. And my blood is poured out for you and for all people for the forgiveness of your sins. So whenever you eat this bread or you drink this cup, remember me until I come again. And through this body and blood of mine, I will be with you. Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Please pray with me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Today's going to be as pretty usual. There's going to be four stations. One of them's going to be over here. There's wine, that's red. The grape juice, that's clear. Here's some more over here. Is all uncovered? Good, we're ready to go. And for those of you who can't tolerate gluten, there's gluten-free wafers at all four stations. Two in the center, two on the side. Got it? Okay, follow the usher's directions. All are invited at this table, for Jesus said, this is my body, this is my blood, given for you. All are well. The body of Christ given for you. As I went down in the river to pray, 
studying about that good old way and who shall wear the starry crown good lord show me the way oh sisters let's go down let's go down come on down oh sisters let's go down down in the river to pray as i went down
Lord, we thank you for this meal you have given to us as a gift of your grace. For the gift of Jesus Christ, the gift of the Holy Spirit, the gift of faith, we give you thanks. Strengthen it in this gift to love you and to love one another. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Pastor Jim, do you have anything to share with the kids this morning? Share it with the kids. Yes, sir. Yeah, you betcha. You betcha. Kids, come on up here. We're gonna we're gonna do a kids time. So it says up there anyway, kids time. Hiya, kids. Hiya, hiya, hiya. How's everybody today? Okay. Holy Trinity. Holy Trinity, Batman. Right? It's Holy Trinity Sunday, right? You can sit down too. Holy Trinity. You know that Holy Trinity is another name that we use for God. And who can name, hi sweetheart, who can name the persons of the Trinity? Three persons of the Trinity. You wanna try? Holy Spirit, Father, and Son. Right, perfect. Would everybody say that three with me? Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Once more. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Right. So, how many are there? Three. Three gods? Do we have three gods? No. One God. Oh my gosh, yes. One God, right? One God? There's not three gods? No, one God. One God who we know as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Good. Okay, that's the Trinity. Now, what else did I have here? Oh, when God created the world, was the Father there in the creation? God the Creator? And Jesus the Son, was he with God? He wasn't here on earth. He was with God, and through him all things were made. Remember that phrase? Through him all things were made. And the Holy Spirit was hovering over the face of the deep, it says in Genesis, that the Holy Spirit was there in the beginning too. So what did God create? If God's the creator, what did God create? He created the earth, the sun, everything. Right. Did God create you? Did God create the universe? Yeah, yeah. Did God create this church? Yeah. Did God create everything? Yeah, yeah. Everything. Everything's created by God. Even when we were formed in our mother's womb, God was in there putting all the parts together to make sure you came out right. When you're born, too, God creates you when you're born. So. One of the things that happens was that God decided that in addition to coming as Jesus, 
<clears throat> and you all have heard about Jesus. God would come again, <clears throat> excuse me, as the Holy Spirit. So <clears throat> on Pentecost, which we celebrated last Sunday, the Holy Spirit came on the disciples, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit and with energy and with excitement and life and love, and they went out to proclaim Jesus to all the world. So the Holy Spirit comes to you too. When you're baptized, you receive the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit dwells in you, giving you faith, giving you courage, giving you wisdom, giving you everything you need to be a child of God. So, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross for us, and we thank you, Holy Spirit, for bringing us into your family as a child of God. Amen. Okay, children, before you go, would you all stand up and help the congregation sing that little song about the light? You know, remember the light of mine? This little light of mine? Let's stand and sing it together. that was. Let us all share some of that light right now by passing the peace. Please greet each other in Jesus' name. Keep on.
give us another one. Part of our offering is music, part of it is prayer, and part of it are these gifts. Thank you. tell you, let us pray. God of heaven and earth, before the foundation of the universe, in the beginning of time, you are the eternal three in one, author of creation, eternal word of salvation, and life-giving spirit of wisdom. Guide us to all truth by your spirit, that we may proclaim all that Christ has revealed, and rejoice in the glory he shares with us. Glory and praise to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit now and forever. 
Amen. Oh, you got to love that music. Well, Natalie, are there any more letters from our listeners to listen to? There sure are. All right. So I have uh, three dedications and um, four memories, so I'm just going to read them off. Uh, one of our listeners would like to say hello to their parents, Don and Adris Serlis, in Minnesota. And another one would like to say hello to Chuck and ask him how he's camping. And this is to uh, Chuck Slocum in Holspo, uh, Washington. And Chris Ann wants to say happy retirement and not to worry, we'll keep up the good news to Pastor Wilson in Wisconsin. And one of our memories a listener had was when they took the confirmation class camping with Pastor Chuck Slocum and Maury Jones and Norm and Janine Funru, and they apparently barbecued hamburgers. So, And then I have a memory, someone, another memory someone sent in. Um, back in the 90s, Pastor Frank Wilson had an Easter ritual, and he would go out before dawn and make an Easter proclamation to the saints at Valley View Cemetery. One of our members, who shall re remain nameless, thought it would make the occasion more interesting if he and a few of his friends would go out early and hide out of sight. That way, when Pastor Wilson shouted the good news, they could respond with, Hallelujah and Amen, brother. It was maybe a good idea, but they never did it, though. So, and then the last one I have is from an old announcement bulletin, <coughs> and um, there's a bit of a typo. It's peanut butter Sunday. This is your chance to help Silverton Area Community Aid replenish their panty shelves with peanut butter. ILCW is sponsoring this event. If you forget to bring your 18 ounce or larger jars of peanut butter today, you may drop off them off at the church office on Monday. So. <laughs> Well, thank you, Natalie. I always like that Pastor Wilson guy. Well, um, thank you very much. Joe, uh, sir, I'm kind of reluctant to ask this, but is there news from the left Lutheran Church in Minnesota? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, this just in. There was a plane crash. A small two-seater airplane crashed in a Lutheran cemetery. Yeah, rescue workers Ole and Sven are on the scene. They've, been, they've recovered 820 bodies so far, <laughs> and the count is expected to increase as the digging continues through the night. Okay. <clears throat> well, sometimes there's no rhyme or reason with those two. <laughs> Joe, maybe you and Halfway Home can tell us why are we able to face tomorrow? Of course, we will do that now. God sent his son. They called him Jesus. He came to love them. He went for him. He helped him die. By my father, I am prepared to say.
thank you. That's right. Jesus is indeed our rhyme and our reason. Even so, we often find ourselves drifting and at a loss for words. God sends his comforter to help and to guide us. Episode 7, The Spirit Awakens. It was a typical Oregon day. In other words, you never knew what the weather was going to be like. Some days it'll be sunny and warm, and the next day it'll be so cold your teeth start chattering like a box of stale breath mints. That night, it was raining cats and dogs. Well, maybe just cats. No, I guess it was more like raining chickens and alligators. Anyhow, it was noisy outside, but quiet in the office. Almost too quiet. Suddenly, the phone rang. We didn't have cell phones back then. I quickly deduced that someone was trying to call me. Either that, or it was yet another announcement from Silverton High School. <laughs> I cautiously picked up the phone and answered. Hello? Hi, boss. It was my secretary, Rosie. Rosie, why are you calling me? Just checking up on you, boss. But I'm right here, Rosie. Our desks are in the same office. Oh, so what you doing? Well, I'm working on a clue. It's a rather difficult one. So you're working on a case, huh? Well, not exactly. It's a clue in my Super Jumbo Edition Mega Crossword Puzzle Book. I need a five-letter word for kayak spelled backwards. Well, don't look at me for help. My mother told me never to use crosswords. Get it? Crosswords? <laughs> Suddenly, there was a knock on the door. I said, knock, knock. Who's there? Then, a mysterious woman walked in. What's your name? If I told you, I wouldn't be mysterious, would I? <laughs> she had a point. She dropped a card on Rosie's desk and left just as quickly as she came. Rosie picked up the card, then gasped. Gasp! What is it, Rosie? It says it's from Reuben A. Sandwich Alien! I grabbed the card from Rosie to read it myself. Reuben A. Sandwich Alias. It says alias, Rosie. Rosie grabbed back the card and read it again. Reuben A. Sandwich Alias Scratch Face Malone. Looks like I was being summoned by the famous ex-mob boss, Scratch Face Malone. So I decided to run out to the address on the card. It's a figure of speech. I'm actually going to ride out there. In a car. I'm riding out there in a car. And now, a word from our sponsor. Are your children tired in the morning? Mom, 
mumble, mumble. And too wild at night. La, 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 la. Maybe they need the Bible diet. First, start their mornings with Canyon View Crunch. Full of action-packed flavors and yummy wisdom, your children will wake up and smell the excitement every morning. Then, let them end each day with a relaxing bowl of farm fresh BBS, as soothing and mellow as a trip to your local barnyard. <laughs> Taste and see the difference. And now, back to our story. <laughs> When I finally made it back to Scratch Face Malone's digs, I found him asleep on the couch to his library. Hey, Scratch Face, you asked me to come? Yeah, yeah, I did. I used to be a bad man, you know. I know. Didn't they used to call you Scarface? That's right. They exaggerated. I just have a small owie on my cheek, right here, see? Oh yeah, I see it now. Oh, and you used to run a racket laundering money. Used to. Keywords, used to. I gave it up. I reformed. Plus, I ran out of soap. I know. I know you know. Look, Jesus saved me, changed my life. But lately... He seemed sad, a little lost. I wanted to help. But lately what? Lately, I don't hear from him. He doesn't talk to me. It's like he doesn't care anymore. I feel like he's gone away. Look, Scratch Face, God is always here and he always cares. But communication is a two-way street. Where's your Bible? In my safe. It's so precious. In your safe? Why do you keep it in a safe? Well, I used to hide it under a bushel. No! But I needed it to hold all my apples. Hey, at least now I'm protecting God's word now. No. See, it's God's word that speaks to you. But you gotta read it, and you gotta listen for his voice in those words. Yeah, I almost got it. Here it is, mint condition. That's nice, Scratch Face, but a well-worn Bible shows it's being used. You want that conversation with God? One way is to read and listen. I'll be here to help you. Gee, thanks. You see, if there's gonna be an awakening in this town, it ain't me that needs to wake up. I'm not the one that's been sleeping. Ah, what a great story that was. And another word from a sponsor. For your summer picnics, be sure to remember all this meat and Van Camp's famous beans. Beanie weenies, serve the finest from Stokely Van Camp. Well, let's check in with one more time with Natalie. Okay, so this is our last few dedications and memories. Uh, one listener would like to say to Derek Wallace that they are thinking of you in Las Vegas, Nevada, every Sunday. Um, Mom and Dad want to say that they love you to Sarah Dorfler from San Francisco. A listener says that they remember fishing for crawdads with the youth group. Do they do that anymore? No, they don't. I don't think we've ever done that, actually. <laughs> so, um, One listener says they remember piling people into a car and then like seeing all the piles of winter coats in the pews as they warmed up in the church back in Minnesota. And another listener says that one of their favorite memories at Emmanuel was being Maybelle's adopted granddaughter for elementary school. And another listener wants to say thanks to the youth's strength that um, has been recovering and saving materials after two fires at the church and the volunteers who helped in rebuilding it and that our church is growing strong. And then I have the last memory, and that's from my grandmother. How do I know this? Because I know her handwriting. Um, I grew up in a small country church in Enterprise, Alabama. 
One of my favorite memories was the day I was baptized. We had a drought, and the person who was supposed to fill the water basin forgot. But just as I was about to be sprinkled, the heavens opened up, and we had rain for me and the farmers. Well, well, thank you, Natalie. We love to hear from our listeners. Well, I guess we ought to check in one last time on our brothers and sisters at Left Sa Lutheran Church in Minnesota. Joe, what's the latest? You know, when I talked to Oli this morning, he told me he got to church early, and he was in the narthex, and he was looking at a plaque on the wall. It had lots of names on it, and the pastor came over to him, and Oli asked him what that plaque was, and the pastor told him, well, every year near Memorial Day, we put the plaque on the wall. It has all the names of the men and women, the brave men and women that had died in the service. And he thought for a minute, and he got really nervous, and he started to tremble. And he asked the pastor, was it the 8.30 or the 10.45? Uh, sometimes I wonder about those folks up in Minnesota. Uh, Joe, I hear Halfway Home has a question. Yes, we do. And we'll let you know. Here we go. One and a two. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His grace? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Spirit sings with us when we praise and worship together. Thank you, Halfway Home. Now, most of you know that Pastor Leah and several women from this congregation are away on retreat. We pray for their safety and for their enjoyment of their time together. So you probably already noticed we've pulled Pastor Jim Bornson out of retirement once more to bring us the good news. Okay. We ready for the good news? Have you heard the gospel? We've heard it all morning long, but we're going to read from the gospel of John. Please stand. Jesus said, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears. And he will declare to you, the things that are to come. He will glorify me because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. O oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder con 
consider all the worlds thy hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art. folks at home to tune out on their radio station and listen to something else because we got a little bit more good news and then we're going to let you go. Now, you all know that Pastor Leah has been here for quite a while. She's been a fine pastor. She's been one that I've admired greatly. When I was first here, she came as an intern or a vicar and then she came back a couple years later as our pastor. Well, being the old, wise, retired pastor that I was, I thought, well, you know, I'll give Pastor Leah just a little bit of advice from this old man. So I would meet with her once in a while to tell her how maybe she could improve an illustration or her delivery needed to be a little stronger, a little more emphasis from the heart. And then just a couple of years ago, I was sitting right over here in the pew, and I was simply astounded by that woman's preaching. That Leah can preach. I mean, she can preach. She don't use no notes like I do. But she speaks from the heart. She goes through the gospel and she tells how Jesus was talking to his disciples and then how Jesus is talking to us too. Well, this is Holy Trinity Sunday and we're not just going to talk about Jesus. We're going to talk about God the Father, the Creator, and all the wonderful things that God does. Now, in the book of Proverbs, it says, when God first created the heavens and the earth, he drew a circle over the depths of the sea, and he set the boundaries for that ocean, and he said, you shall come this far and no farther. And wisdom was there in the beginning. Wisdom was there with God, teaching us, as well as God, how to create everything. Now, one of the amazing things that God the Father did was decided, I'm going to share this wisdom with you. Now, I don't know if you folks know any Jewish people. Any of you know some Jewish folks? 
they really value wisdom. Wisdom is a big part of the Old Testament because wisdom is something that God shares with us. We have that very wisdom of God that comes to us if we open up and learn from our mistakes. Now, you know that old saying that not everybody learns from their mistakes? <laughs> That's a fool. A wise person learns from their mistakes, and when they get to be my age, some of your age, we get to be wise. And that's a wonderful thing that we can share with young people. We can share it with our kids and our grandkids. Because wisdom is a gift from God. Another gift from God that we celebrate on this Holy Trinity Sunday, in addition to the wonderful act of creation, this marvelous setting of the bounds for the sea, is the wonderful creation of God of the whole, the whole universe. God set the stars in the sky, the Bible says. He put the firmament up there and put the stars up there for us to admire. Now, the old folks in the Old Testament thought that there was a firmament, meaning it's kind of a, like a blanket over the whole world, and the stars were up there scattered across the firmament. Nowadays, we've got telescopes. We've got spaceships that go out beyond the bounds of Earth to see things more clearly. And those big telescopes, they tell us those things aren't just stars out there. Some of those little tiny dots are galaxies. Full, complete galaxies with billions of stars in each galaxy. The universe is way, 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 way bigger than we could ever imagine. Now, those galaxies and those stars and everything, like the kids said, God created it all. It's been getting bigger and bigger. The scientists tell us it started with one big bang. Starting from one point in space and time, bam! And God created the universe. That's what the scientists say. Well, that's okay. That doesn't hurt me at all. Because I still think that's beautiful how Genesis says, one day at a time, God said this, and then it happened. God said, well, then let there be fish and animals and birds, and it happened. I think that story is beautiful too. Either way, this creation that we live in is a marvelous, marvelous work of God. But God wasn't through. At a right time, he sent his son Jesus, came in the flesh to be like you and me. Jesus, the son of God, died on the cross. Jesus died on the cross to be our savior. He also sent the Holy Spirit to bring us wisdom. First, he came to the disciples at Pentecost, 50 days after Jesus' resurrection. Then the Holy Spirit came, gave those disciples the courage that they were lacking. They were all huddled together in that room. You remember the story? Locked up because they were scared of what the Jews or the Romans might do to them. Well, the Holy Spirit filled them with power and wisdom and confidence and courage, and they went out and started proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ. So in addition to the creation that God does and the wonderful work of the Holy Spirit and the wonderful redemption of Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit now comes to you and you and you and you and you and me. And this Holy Spirit gives us the courage we need to proclaim that good love of God through Jesus Christ as well. The Holy Spirit fills us with faith. The Holy Spirit fills us with hope so that we can join in the glory of God. That's the promise that Jesus gave to us and to his disciples. That someday, as Jesus is glorified by the Father, you and I will join them in the heavenly family to be part of God's eternal creation. Eternal beyond the limits of this universe. So much bigger, so much greater so much more glorious. That glory is ours through the promise of our God. Amen. Amen. That is the good news from Emmanuel Lutheran Church. Amen. 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 Amen, Pastor Jim. What a blessing it is to receive God's word. Pastor Jim, would you and Halfway Home please send us off this morning with a final blessing. Blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit 
be with you always. Amen. Amen. You have been listening to the Old Time Gospel Hour on Radio ILC, broadcast from the Church on the Hill, Emmanuel Lutheran Church in Silverton, Oregon. And until next time, go in peace, proclaim the good news. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen.